Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Perfect you. Strong Jesse right there, brother. Come on back here. If you want to play, I'll come back here and play with you. Oh, yes, sir. Still doesn't want to come in. He liked that little nest robin crawfish, didn't he? There we go. Woo! Got that little bitty hook right there in the top of your face. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Yes, you are. Yes, you certainly are. Hello. Okay, before we get started today, let me share a fishing tip with you that'll help you tremendously with your lake fishing. Now, most bass fishermen have two or three reservoirs they normally like to fish. And if I had to guess, chances are a couple of these lakes would be very similar in makeup. And the fisherman tends to concentrate on similar areas in each lake. Now, somewhere along the line, when he began fishing these lakes, he tried a variety of areas, but was only successful primarily in a given type of water. Therefore, he gravitates back to that type of water every time he goes fishing. The reason this type of water produces best is because he's learned how to fish it efficiently and has confidence in his methods. Now this is good, but also has some drawbacks. We can tend to lock ourselves into certain types of areas and consequently never learn to fish different kinds of water. Ooh, we look here coming up. Right here at the boat, you get it. Whoa. Look at that. Strong Jesse right there, boys. See the backbone in that rod? Look at that dog pool right there, boy. He hit it, he hit it six feet from the boat. Whew, that's a hard fighting fish one. Big old fat fish. Toodaloo. Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Southern Arkansas fishermen are oriented toward brush and timbered filled lakes that are basically shallow and normally semi-clear to muddy. East Tennessee, Northern Arkansas, and Missouri fishermen are oriented more toward gravel, rocks, and boulder filled lakes that are usually very clear and deep water. Now, southern Georgia and Florida fishermen rarely fish anything but grass or aquatic growth, no deeper than their hip pocket. They all are usually fairly proficient at what they know, but some totally lose their confidence when faced with another type of lake. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, go boldly.
Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. I'm using eight pound original strand. Just take my time with them. I got you. Okay, where was I? Oh yeah. I too made this mistake until I decided to spend some time on each fishing trip trying new water. If I didn't locate fish, I reasoned that I could always fall back on my favorite areas. Not only did this cause me to start catching more fish, but it also forced me to learn how to locate fish in different types of water. Most lakes can be broken down into three distinct areas, upper, middle, and lower. The upper it's normally shallow, murky, or fertile, and contains the most dense cover. The middle, the moderate depths, semi-clear, with a mixture of cover and open water. Lower, deepest area of water of the lake, with the clearest water, and normally open with sparse cover, if any. Uh oh, look here. There's one right there. Oh, it's a better one. Oh, that powerful. There's an old rod right there, strong. Time to move back. Right in your mouth. There you go. They like that thing. I'm telling you, they like that bait. By learning how to fish each different section, and believe me, each section requires a different approach, you expand your ability to catch fish. Now, experience will teach you that each section will pay off during certain times of the year. A lot of fishermen say, I can always catch fish in the shallow brush cover on the upper end, and it's easier to fish. So that's all they fish. As long as conditions are favorable, their argument may be valid. But let heavy cold rains muddy the upper end with cold water, and it can be unfishable. This leaves them with two alternatives. And you're right, neither one of them is good. They can either be hard-headed and stay in the upper end where they'll be lucky if they get a strike, or they can head down the lake and look for areas where the muddy runoff isn't as drastic. The problem is with heading down the lake is that it requires a different approach. And the fisherman who lacks versatility, well, what's gonna happen? He's gonna suffer. Now, I suggest that on every time or every trip that you go fishing, spend some time learning something new. And the remaining time, enjoy your old favorite places. Regardless of the area you fish, finding the correct depth is the key to catching fish. I hear fishermen talking about it all the time. You can almost always determine the skill of a bass fisherman by the second question he asks you. If you see someone on the boat ramp at the marina or pass someone on the lake and they ask you, how's fishing? That's a normal first question to which you might reply. Oh, I managed to catch a few. But the most important second question he could ask you is, how deep did you catch your fish? If he doesn't, chances are he's not real skilled at bass fishing. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination. 
and Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Strin, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lurlock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Lurlock. Their TackLogic technology locks your terminal tackles safely into place. 100% made in America, Lurlock revolutionizing the way you fish. Gotta let him go. I'm gonna tell you what, some tough old babies. Look at that. Big old thick. Yes, you are. Hey, let me give you an up close and personal look at the rod and reel combo that we're using today. It's really unique. It's Quantum's Graphite 6'6 six six Telecast. Now this IM6 graphite telescopic medium fast action rod, it's got D-ring guides and it collapses from six foot six down to 20 inches. Very light and super sensitive. Now the reel, it custom matches the rod with a continuous anti-reverse clutch, stainless steel bail wire, and a solid brass pinion gear, and also has an aluminum spool. Hey, it's so compact, you can store them, get you a couple of them. You can store them almost anywhere. Under your car seat, toolbox on your truck, your four-wheeler, even if you got a bicycle. The Telecast is definitely a carry anywhere, catch anything too, that you'll always be glad to have along. Yo, where are you? The little bait we're using is a Rebel Wee Curl in a nest robber color. And it's something they really like. And the area we're fishing is just a, a ridge. It comes out of the back of this pocket right here. It extends right on out right here. It's four feet, goes out to five to six and drops off into a, a trough that goes all the way up through this pocket. Runs out to about six, drops into 14, goes down through here. We're in about 13 right here at the bow of the boat. The back of the boat's in about 16. I want to reemphasize the importance of depth that we were talking about a minute ago to be sure this point is driven home. Now many fishermen have the tendency to begin a line of questioning about fishing conditions with what lure you're using, how fast you worked it, what color was it, even the area of the lake you caught the fish. But a knowledgeable fisherman needs only to know the depth at which the fish were caught. And with that, he can put every piece of the puzzle together. When you throw in a bait like this, these little light baits, and you put a, a split shot on them, the best thing to do is when you throw them, just about the time they hit the water, pull back on them. And what that does, it lets the bait go on 
and it pulls back on the split shot. And that way the split shot doesn't go ahead of the doesn't go ahead of the bait. By that I mean when I pull back on it, I pull the I pull the split shot back and the bait goes on. That way if I don't pull back, the split shot gets ahead of the bait and the line falls over the bait and the line gets tangled in the hooks. So what I'm doing here, I'm making sidearm casts as I throw. By the time it hits the water, I pull back. Many times you'll see that sinker hit the water before the bait hits the water, and that's what I want it to do. Bill's question and answer of the week is brought to you by LureLock. Our durable tackle boxes will protect your prize lures and make organization fun and easy. LureLock, revolutionizing the way you fish. Bill, like you, I use quantum smoke rods with micro guides. What's a good knot when using braid and fluorocarbon lines? Micro guides need small knots. With Strand Braid, you can use from 30 pound test that has an 8 pound mono diameter. Now, my favorite knot when tying these two lines is Strand's Uni to Uni. You can learn how to tie this knot on Strand's website. A great knot that's very small and cast exceptionally well. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort, and Motor Guide. Trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter, sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Pan Optics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. You've seen Millennium's R100 spider lock rig that sports four rods. What a great product. Well, take a look at the new R200 single for salt or fresh water. All aluminum construction, 360 degree base rotation, 180 degree rotation at the rod, 12 to 20 inches height adjustment, and it's ideal for mounting in tight places. Tell you what, get you some. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Oh baby, look at uh, here. Yeah. Putting on a show. Woohoo! Gum boy. That's a show off right there. That man. Right there ain't no slouch. Tell you what, it's the strongest dog on fish. You had your Cheerios this morning. That little bitty hook sticking thing. So, any way you look at it, depth is the single most important factor in your fishing. If you're not fishing the correct depth, you're wasting your, you're just wasting a ton of time. The finest angler around can fish the best bait in the world, but if he's fishing it at the wrong depth, he's not going to do very well. But at the correct depth, almost anyone can catch a few fish on the worst lure made. Naturally, the better you know a lake, the easier it's going to be to determine the correct depth on a given day, especially if you fished it recently. You probably already know a number of spots, and chances are at least one or two of them will produce a fish or two, giving you vital depth information. Now here are a few tips 
about finding the right depth. Check with a local fisherman, uh, maybe at a Bass Pro Shop store or some other sporting goods store. Maybe he's been on the lake or has talked to someone who has been on the lake. Or check around with a few fishermen, maybe at the marina or on the boat ramp. Remember that immediately after you ask them how fishing has been, ask them about the depth and in what section of the lake. Like I said, keep in mind that each section of a large lake is really three different lakes. The upper reaches are more fertile and have the most colored water with the most shallow cover. Now the middle section is usually semi-clear with moderate depths of water with less cover. And the lower section is the deepest with the clearest water clarity, little or no cover. And there, well, the pattern is usually the deepest. Uh oh, here we go. Good. Ooh, a big one right there. I mean, I've shown up big one. Well, where he's going? There he's coming up. Look at that. Way out, John. He's wrapped around a power pole. He is a horse. He's just steadily pulling, stripping drag. Ooh, what a fish. On that little bitty bait. The mouth on him. Right, here we go. See you, big one. Many reasons blend into the fact that all fish have certain preferred depth zones. And if you're to catch them, you must learn more about how to find the right depth. And the more you fish, you'll soon learn more and more about this great sport. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.